think for me of a pair of numbers. Pair of numbers, and we want to add to negative 18. We want to multiply to 45. Do you have the pair of number? Minus 15, minus 3. So these are pretty big numbers. There's my minus 15 and my minus 3. Okay, what next? Yeah. Okay, negative 9 plus... Well, that, <laughs> you're, that's right, you're doing this part. You're doing this part. And often, by the way, you've got a lot of different candidates that work here, right? So uh, we already went to minus 3 and minus 15. Minus 9, minus 9. Checks out here. Minus 3, minus... No, hold on. No, yeah, that, that one's okay. Minus 3 and minus... Uh, I already did minus 3 minus 15. What am I thinking of? Minus 6 and minus 12 works here, right? You could have a lot of different options here, but you have to check out that they work here also. Generally speaking, this is a better way to go to look at because it has fewer factors than this has pairs that add up to. Okay, um, I factorized. I expanded and I factorized because at different points, expanding was more useful and at other points, factorizing was more useful. What's the point? What am I trying to get to? 3 or 15. Okay. So, just before I, I will come to you in a second, this is usually where we end, isn't it? Right? You're like, I, I had a quadratic. They even told me to write a quadratic, like write a suitable form and solve a suitable quadratic. And then I have two answers, which is usually where I end. Okay? Are we happy with this? What was your, were you going to suggest something or ask a question? I was just going to ask, um, how does x squared minus x squared give us x squared? Wait, which line are you talking about? Line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Oh, oh, okay. This line here? Are you looking at these terms here? Yeah, I didn't see the other Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one here, one here, and then it subtracts one. Is that okay? Yep, good. Okay. So hold on. I had a few of you saying, eh, I'm a bit iffy about this solution. But I like, I like my two answers. What's, what's going wrong? Yeah. Oh, you had a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question is, how many marks would this question That's a really good question. Um, I don't know about your, I'd love your opinion on this, Mrs. Lees. I'd sort of teeter between, uh, I'd sort of more go towards, uh, yeah, between two and three. Between two and three. Um, when you have a look at how much has gone into this, I could easily find three spots that I could say, oh, there's a distinct skill here that I'm looking for a student to demonstrate, right? Um, but at the same time, this is assumed knowledge, right? Pythagoras, you know. Quadratics, you know. I know it took a long time to get there, but it's partly because I was talking you through it and we were looking at different options and all that kind of thing. Okay, so it kind of depends. <laughs> yeah, there are no straight answers. And Sorry about that. I'm just explaining it away as is, because we're teetering between two or three, I'd probably lean towards two. If there was an answer at the end that we then needed to eliminate, which Mr. Wu was saying we had to check that both answers work in the situation, if there was one that we had to eliminate, that would be the pushover to go to the three. Yeah, as we're about to shortly demonstrate. Did you have another question you wanted to ask? Oh, no, just no, 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 no. Ah, Okay, you go ahead. Okay, so I've got this x equals 3 or 15, right? Now, we've seen in algebra we can check both of these solutions against what we started off with. And in this case, this is the very first time an equation appears, right? Now, I'm going to go right out on a limb, and I'm going to say, if you test either of these, and you have a calculator, you're welcome to test it, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure they'll both work. Pretty sure they'll both work. Um, and go ahead, if you're like, you, there's enough of you at a table. Someone test three, chuck it into here. Someone test 15, chuck it in, see what happens. I'll even do it right now. Uh, let's see here. If I put in 15, that's 225 plus 64, which I'm pretty sure is 289, which is 17 squared, right? And you can do it with, th you can do it with three, right? Uh, th what's that? Nine plus negative 4 squared, that's going to be 16. 9 plus 16 is 25, which is 5 squared. So they both check out with the equation, right? But the equation is not the very first thing that I put on the board. Do you remember there's something else literally above the equation that I did first? What was it? It was, it was this picture, right? Now, I flagged this earlier. I said, oh, we drew a picture, and then we, drew, we wrote out this equation, and then kind of our algebra brain sort of, you know, kicked into gear and we kind of temporarily forgot that this was a shape, right? But it is still a shape. This x is supposed to be something up here. Now, has someone already noticed that one of these solutions, 3 or 15, one of them has a 
big glaring problem with it when you try and look back at the original shape. Which one has a problem? Three has a problem, right? Why does it have a problem? Yeah, yeah, you get a three here, and then you get a five here, and then you're like, ooh, my triangle has a negative four centimeter long side. What's up with that, right? So we need to exclude one of these answers, okay? Now, what I just said, you probably don't want to write, ooh, there's a negative four, you don't want to write that, okay? Um, you can say, but, right? And this is, in fact, I'm going to do it over here because I think it's going to require a little bit of space. I'm going to say, but, you have these things which imply restrictions on your values. They can't just be anything you like. They're lengths, so every single length has to be positive, including this one. Right? X minus 7 is a length. Right? So therefore, X minus 7, the value, it has to be, is it allowed to be equal to 0? Can I, can I let it be exactly 0? No, I can't, because then there's no triangle, is there? So it has to be greater than and not equal to zero, right? That thing has to be positive. That means that x is greater than seven. You can see why x equals three no longer satisfies that, right? So therefore, x equals 15 only, all right? So that's kind of sneaky, right? Because they didn't sort of, you know, your, your brain kicks into this mode and then you forget the kind of question you're actually looking at, a really, really common error for students to make.